So you might be in the same situation as I am. I have a lot of old cameras, small cameras, because I mainly do bike reviews and I always want to take small things with me. But I do want to have a bigger camera, a better camera, a mirrorless camera, to get a little bit more cinematic look and have the ability to change the lenses, just to get a little bit better footage. But then I got approached by the Hanser and a thought struck my mind. What if I could use a smaller camera, like an action camera, a drone or a phone, for instance, and get the same type of look, that cinematic look, with software, then pay in this much for a fancy new camera. What if I can get away with the equipment I've already got? So in this video, I'm going to do a series of tests, a few scenarios. I'm going to test these cameras. An iPhone 14 Pro will go in here. I don't like the look from this camera. The footage is too over-processed and it does not look very natural. It works okay on a bright summer's day, but this is Sweden and not every day look like this. I sometimes use a mist filter to soften up the image a bit, but in this test I will only use the Hanser to see what it can provide. I'll use the Cinema P3 app with the HLG3 picture profile. I think that works the best since this camera does not have Apple Log. My GoPro is getting old. This is a Hero 9. Okay image from this camera for what it is. I use a flat picture profile which needs a light grade or color correction. Nothing fancy. Finally, I got my Sony ZV-1 which in terms of image quality is like twice as good as the other cameras. Still a small point and shoot though, but I like it very much and this camera is the reason why I haven't moved on to a slightly better mirrorless camera. I can't really find a logical reason to upgrade. More than that, I really want a new camera. I use a flat HLG picture profile here too, which I'll also color correct before applying the look from the Hanser. Apparently, HLG footage does not need any other input than Rec. 709, which is convenient. Then this contrast boost in the film developer tool can be used to do some fine adjustments to the look if needed. These other sliders can also be used to correct the image before applying any film look. In theory, you could use Dehancer for both color correction and grading, but if you need to do some things to get a good input, Dehancer says that these corrections should be applied before using the plugin. I know my cameras and I will do some slight adjustments here to get the footage in the right window. I often need to tweak the colors a bit here too, depending on which camera I use. But my hope is that I don't need to do that anymore. I should point out that in my case I will not go for any super cinematic or creative look. I just want to take away that digital look and get sort of a more creamier and analog look. So I'm not that interested in any film damage or grain or any other of these settings even if I understand why it's there. In rare cases I would probably use them, but not in this test. I'm going for very subtle changes that will make the footage look natural and not overcooked. I'm using an adjustment clip here to see if I can get the same type of look over several clips. I often mix footage between GoPros, drones and other cameras, so a simple workflow is important to me and it's important that the footage match regardless of camera. I'm sure I would get a better result by tweaking each individual clip, but I'm not a cinematographer. I mainly produce YouTube videos. I found that these settings would get me close to where I want. This is the footage from a Sony ZV-1. Under input, I only changed the source to Rec. 709. I don't touch the other settings, since these settings apply to several clips. But if the color correction is done properly, and you need to change for instance the temperature after the creative look is applied, it's here where you really should change it. The fringe is tightly connected to the halation and bloom I think, so changes might be needed here too but I will only use a touch of halation and bloom, so in my case, I will leave this for now. Then we come to the interesting part, the film profiles. There are a lot to choose from, and it can be a bit too much for someone like me. But from what I've heard from better colorists than myself, Fujicolor Nature 1600 is a profile that will produce a natural look, so I'll go for that. Film developer does a lot of things and relates to the development of an analog film role. 
I skipped that since I don't understand what it does and I don't wish to introduce something that I interpret as imperfections. Film compression, however, is very important for these types of cameras and it affects the highlights. The footage from my 8-bit cameras clip easily and by using this function it's possible to bring more details to the highlights and it also gives a softer roll-off in the whites in my opinion. This roll-off is something that a fancier camera is much better at. I think film compression is one of the most important of these tools in order to get away from that digital look. Expand allows you to use the black and white points so that they match the dynamic range of the footage better. Useful and the dynamic range differs between my cameras, so I need a separate adjustment clip for each type of camera. Then we have the print function, which of course relates to analog film development. This is the last step in that process. I choose linear as I feel it gives the most natural look. I have tested the glossy paper look, which looks fine too, but it's a bit too much for my purpose. I move the color sliders a bit, which I simply think looks better, especially in the sky. I skip color head. I honestly don't understand what it does or what it tries to simulate, but after fiddling a bit with it, I simply just decided it's not for me. I also skip film grain. This I understand, but it's not for me either. Halation is interesting and can be something that takes the edge off that digital look. It introduces a red or orange halo around bright light sources. It's a film emulsion effect. Maybe it's more of a stylistic effect, but I use it set to the very lowest setting. Then there's bloom, which affects contrasting areas, and perhaps it can gloss over some of that digital sharpness. I like this look too, but the key here in my mind is to not overdo it. Film damage is fun and works great, but it's not for me. Same with film breadth. That relates to the inconsistencies between different frames in a developed film. Gate weave is the mechanical swinging of the film strip in a camera or a projector. Not for me. Overscan does this. Not for me either. And I also don't need any vignetting. You could use the output to blend the settings you just made. But I feel it's better to get the right look from the beginning. The blending doesn't seem to be very consistent. Or maybe it's just my eyes, getting a bit colorblind now. I first thought the LUT generator could give me a LUT for everything that I could use to apply to my future projects. But it's not that simple. A LUT cannot store everything that the Hansel does. And the purpose with this function is to create a LUT that can be loaded to your camera or monitor to get a reference. Anyway, that is my take on the settings. Let's check what this does to the different cheap cameras in different scenarios. I hope you like boats, because there are lots of boats here. The GoPro footage will get the stronger stylistic effect with these settings. I have better luck with my iPhone. Dehancer cleans up the image massively. The colors are way better. This is an impossible shot with the camera pointing straight into the sun. I would never use this footage for anything, but it's an interesting test. Again, the colors get better. I have trouble with the sky on the GoPro. It doesn't look natural. There are of course many other settings and film emulations to choose from, but I will probably not use Dehancer on my GoPro footage anyway. But at the end of this video we will see another camera where Dehancer will have a dramatic effect on the footage. I think I get a pleasing result with my iPhone. It's easy to bring out the details in the whites, which often gets blown out in these conditions.
And I'm also going to test some drone footage. I have four different drones, I think. This is the oldest one I've got. This is the original Mavic Mini. And it's a small sensor, not very good colors, but maybe this Dehancer software can make this footage a lot better than what it is straight from camera. But it's very windy today, so I think I'll use some old footage that I took with this drone from the same location, but at a different time. These clips I actually managed to sell to Adobe stock, but that was years back. The quality from this drone is not up to par any longer. Let's see what the Hanser can do about that. I find that the difference is kind of mind-blowing, especially considering how easy it is to get the colors, the exposure and indeed the look that I want. Look at these pillars, how much details I can get out from that film compression setting. And the red areas look way less washed out. Fantastic! If you wish to try Dehancer on your own footage, I have affiliate links in the description. There is a trial period, so it will not cost anything to have a go to see if this is something for you too. <laughs> 